Hey, this is Lee Nevis, host of CJ and Cell. Thanks for listening to the following podcast on Public House Media. This is Julianne Condia, host of Rewritten here on Public House Media. Thank you so much for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Rewritten, where we will talk about you having limitless potential and can rewrite your story at any time. No matter your background, your past, or current situation, you can have the type of life you crave. A new show comes out every single Monday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Rewritten. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hey Pageant Pals, I'm Maddie and I'm Jess and welcome back to another episode of Crown and Dangerous. Hooray! Episode 16 to be exact, I do have to mention, I'm really, We've made it. We've made it. We say that every time. I'm actually really excited though because I saw today that a, uh, or this is her traveling pants going back to Netflix. Is it really? April 1st. Oh I'm my so god. Oh that my god. That was my movie back then. I had no idea what was really going on because mm-hmm. I was too young to really, you know, pick up on the deeper themes in it, but- yeah. Love that movie. Oh, that was so good. I haven't seen that in years. I also... What sister do you think you're most like? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> really? I think you're totally Alina. Do you think so? Oh, yeah. Aww. Like the That's cute, really nice. shy one. Aww. I think I'm kind of... Like, sometimes I think I'm Tibby <laughs> to a T because she's really sarcastic. And okay. Then I could I think, see that. And sometimes I think I'm Bridget. It depends. That'd be a solid mix. If you could combine the two, I think that's accurate. Right. I hair, also, you know. I started watching the third season of Queer Eye. Oh, yeah. And I haven't cried yet. I cried, like, at the first couple really? seasons. Yeah. Oh I don't know why I was so emotional. I was like, oh, they're just changing people's lives. And I don't know. I used to think that it was just, like, a show about, they're like, changing people's God. lives. AKA, like, every, <laughs> like, every show does. Like, Stream Makeover Home Edition back in the day. Oh, my God. No, but I, I think the first couple seasons, I was like, it's literally just a show about old men with bad hygiene and they just like kind of <laughs> reinvent their lives but okay. I haven't cried yet but I'm really excited to to watch that but I think we should kick this episode kick it off. off with a few readings from our Instagram DMs. that reminded me of church because because in church yeah and now we have a reading from Corinthians oh my god ew oh my gosh okay so Jesus anyways <laughs> Anyway, right, back to the podcast. So, no. All right. So, we always we have permission to read these. Yes. Which is good, but we do keep them anonymous. But so we got this DM a week ago, a couple weeks ago, maybe March eleventh. March eleventh. Okay. Um, and it was from someone who was kind of weighing the pros and cons of whether or not she should resign her title. So we're gonna read it to you, and we're gonna kind of hash it out um, and kind of give some advice. Right. So all in all, it's a little bit of a long DM, so I'm just going to sum it up Mm -hmm. for the sake of time. But she's basically just saying that she has a really bad MAO experience. She's never really competed in a pageant except for the one that she won. Mm -hmm. And she's supposed to go to state and her directors have not helped her at all. She's not told about events or deadlines or when she asks for help with dresses, they say they hate everything. She picks out, doesn't offer any or don't don't offer any guidance on what to look for. Mm -hmm. I've never done this in my life. So I feel very lost. That's just one example about how they're disappointing. The list goes on and on. I'm conflicted. I don't like giving up, but six months ago, I didn't give a S word about Miss America. So (laughs) why do I care now? Should I fight through or hang up my sash? Um, PS. I love the show. Okay. Thank you for liking our show. That's exciting. Appreciate that. Um, So basically, our response, my, and I'm just, I'm not going to read this full thing because it's like a two, it's a two, it's a two message DMer. So <laughs> basically my opinion on that is to stick it out. And I know that probably comes as a shock. I think, you know, people look at our podcast and maybe they're like, oh yeah, like, you know, bra burning 
you yeah, know, whatever, like we hate everything. Right. But no, honestly, <laughs> I think that when you make a commitment, you should stick it out. I For think sure. that even if you don't like it, it's negative right now, you'll grow from it. At least you'll learn something from the experience. Mm-hmm. You can say you did it. I think that that goes a long way. People, when you sign up for something, yeah, it's not, you know, maybe all it's cracked up to be, cracked up to be for you. Right. But I think going the distance, I think that you'll get something more out of it than just giving up because of a hard time. That being said, I do get it being a first title and it totally does suck and yeah. feel like you're really lost because you don't know what's going on. No. And some, you know, like having that guidance and having the support of a director, like I know we we both had very awesome experiences with local directors, like having that sort of guidance is very helpful, especially for your first year, but also when you compete in this organization, it's a chance to take initiative, you know, and your year is what you make it. So make the best of it is kind of my thought on it. Um, I think a big part of being ready to be a title holder is to, you know, know how to make your own schedule, know how to communicate with, with people, make your own appearances, you know, kind of being a go-getter. Um, at least that was from my personal experience. So even if you don't get the guidance that you're searching for, you know, don't be afraid to step up and 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 take it by the horns and just run with it. Um, Cause sometimes that can lead to some pretty great experiences too, but right. this and, is tricky. Right. And I think too. Um, and then she did respond back to us and basically she was like, Hey guys, thanks for the advice, but I'm, I'm just going to quit. Mm-hmm. And she said, I did it for the experience and I already got what I needed and it wasn't rewarding anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but they go with my runner up. That would be great. She really wanted to compete. Um, and I guess too, like if you're not ready for the job, do not compete. And I, mm-hmm. and I, think, oh, it's, I think it's good to compete for experience and everything, but you also do have to have the realization that you could win. And this is something that other girls would lay down their pageant life for. Right. So it, it does, you know, you know, you did sign a contract. I know we, we talked about that too. It's like you signed a contract, you made a commitment that if you were to win this, you, you do, you, you push it out your entire year and you make the most of it. And so that's another tricky thing is that if you, you know, if you step back, you're kind of, you're breaking contract too, which is tough, but. Right. And the ending line that she's, wrote was thank you for your support but much like you guys passion days are now behind me uh Uh, how do you feel about that jess i don't know i mean let's see so it's very clear that we have we've had a very different experience from this person yes and we say all the time like on this podcast that like experience is everything like and each person has such so a different yes to each person individual. has such a different experience depending on what titles you've held how long you've competed how many times you competed like it's so different and everybody has a very different experience so I can't speak for her I guess right but what I can say is that you know I um, I wish that she gave it a fair shot mm-hmm. I wish that she had the state experience and pushed it out through state because I know like some of my like best memories, but also some of the biggest challenges throughout the year came from state week, right? you know, and you can learn and grow so much from that. So I wish she would have stuck it out. So I think to that, to thank you for support, but much like you guys, my pageant days are behind me. I wish she got her pageant days started, right? (laughs) You know, that's a good point. Yeah. But again, like, yeah, I don't really know. Right. If there's one thing we talk about on this podcast, it's about validating and owning your story and your truth. 100%. And again, I think it's so easy for people to pick out certain things that they want to hear and they don't want to hear, whether that's from a podcast, that's from politics, mm-hmm. whatever. Right. But we will always, always, always say that our experience is our own. It's not like anyone else's. Mm-hmm. And take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. yep. you know, turn the off button, turn the pause button if you don't like it. But, you know, much like you guys, patents are behind me. Right. I, and this thing, we, I always followed out my contract years and so did mm-hmm. you. So I can't really say it's yeah. a comparable experience. We left this organization with good memories and many oh, lifelong 100%. tools. And like you said, she doesn't have that. However, I respect 
her opinion. I respect yep. her truth because I've never been in that situation. Right, right. So it's fine. People can respectfully agree to disagree. That is great. We love sure. the support of the show. We're glad that she reached out to us. Yeah. You know, and even- always like, uh, like we always say, like, we love to hear from you. So like, right. please like share your stories, share your opinions. Like if you have something to say to us, feel free to say it because right. And she did say, too, in the DM that she was miserable and she she was stressed out. So that's best for your mental health, too. We get that. And go live your truth. And we hope that you can use your talents elsewhere. For sure. Also, we do have one more DM that we got today. And it's one of our listeners. Her name is... Elise Thompson, and it's her birthday tomorrow. Yay! So happy birthday. Happy birthday, Elise. We hope it's a great one. Thank you for listening. Right. And she also mentioned, which we could also touch more on next week. Yeah. But she said, Can you guys eventually discuss that Miss Tennessee volunteer pageant and what you both think of it? So we just, right. So you know, I just kind of discovered this the other day. Yeah. I was on YouTube and I, I love YouTube, so I always go down a black hole, but I saw Danny Walker posted a YouTube video about Miss Tennessee and Miss Volunteer, and then I asked you about it yesterday. Mm-hmm. So, hey, did you hear about this volunteer pageant versus yeah. the America pageant? Um, I think you said you heard, like, a I heard, snippet about it. Yes, very briefly. But basically, the directors were given the hee-ho by Miss, you know, Miss America, and they decided to start their own pageant, the Miss Tennessee Volunteer Pageant. Apparently, mm-hmm. there's like 36 girls that transferred yeah. over or signed up. So That's it crazy. sounds like it's kind of developing into something. So we'll keep you posted on what we think about that when more details develop. Yeah, I'd like to know like if – yeah, I'm, I'm curious to know the details. Like how, how do girls compete in this? Like what are the categories? Is it similar to MAO? How scoring – what are the prizes? Like, what happens after you win this? Right. You know, I'm I'm very curious. I think it's kind of cool. I don't yeah. know. I think again, it's one of those things that, um, you know, if it's it's people taking a stand for what they believe in, mm-hmm. and I don't think that this momentum of the, you know, um, negative 2.0 or like I, not people not supporting, I feel like it's not going to go away that easily. Oh, I no. think that they're kind of hoping, oh, people will you know this will die out eventually. Like, they'll see how Miss America 2.0 is relevant, and like, everybody will basically cease fire. And I don't really see that happening yet. So, no. No. you know, we'll stay tuned. But also, we brought up that DM because we wanted to talk a little bit today. It'll probably be a little bit of a shorter episode, but yep. we wanted to just talk about how, you know, when you feel like you're ready to quit, when you're burnt out, mm-hmm. um, you know, still maintaining your integrity, all of that jazz. We just wanted to shed a little bit of light. Yeah. Now, our opinions on that because we've we've talked a little bit about like feeling burnt out especially in you know a couple episodes where we talked about like our personal experiences and you know when we knew that we were ready to be done competing and done participating um burnout is so easy mm-hmm. <laughs> honestly it's I feel like it's so common in something like this it's it's I feel like it's common in a lot of things where you're so heavily involved in something um it's gosh, burnout, it's like, burnout happens to everybody. But I think, like you said earlier, sticking to something that you are committed to is, I mean, that shows integrity right? to me. Mm-hmm. You know, if you stick something through 100%, like, follow through, learn from it. Um, there was a quote that I read. Actually, there was a little girl that I interviewed for my blog lately. And she was like, she was like, yeah, my parents always encouraged me to, like, try everything. Mm-hmm. And when I try something, I'm going to follow through. Um, if I don't like it, I will still finish, but I won't have to do it again. Right. You know, I won't have to do it next time. Um, and I think that's kind of a great way to look at it, regardless of what you do, whether that's pageants, whether that's sports, whether that's, I don't know, who knows what. Like yeah, Growing up, I cannot imagine if there was something that I did and I wanted to quit in the middle of the year. Oh my, oh my God, gosh, no. No, that would not be an option. Never. Like, you need to follow through your comm- commitments. This is a life lesson. <laughs> right. Now I'm really thankful for because I think that sometimes that's kind of lost now. Yes, 100%. You know, with all these new kids coming in. Like, new kids, the young bucks. The young bucks, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, what does integrity mean to you? Integrity to me is... I I have so many instances that run through my mind and examples that I could bring up. Mm-hmm. Um, 
integrity. I would say this is a quality that I value a lot in someone because I think somebody's only as believable and truthful as their word. Sure. And all you really have in this life is your word. Mm -hmm. And when you say one thing and do another, that's something that it can happen so much. Yeah. And it's very hard frustrating because I'm someone that I don't want someone to say that about me ever. Right. Um, So maybe that comes that makes me come off a little bit more harsh or blunt, but mm-hmm. at least I'm being honest and you're not going to see me lie. So, yeah. And I think that's admirable. And I, I would hope that like other people aspire to, to have that right. too. But I think it is hard to maybe even in Miss America, if you think about judging panels mm-hmm. and this is something that a few people have talked about, but, and I don't know how much that like truth there is to this, but I think in some instances, a lot more judging panels are more liberal Sure. So I would say if you're like a really diehard conservative, I think that you do have more of a challenge when interviewing. Sure. I think to say if you're given, I know this is kind of a softball, like, or, you know, oddball question, but say you're given, you know, some question and I, the easy answer is to say like, oh yeah, like everyone. Just to agree and. Right. Everyone and, should have right. like, again, like I say, if you're like, oh, I'm sorry, this is a word vomit right now. <laughs> say if. <laughs> You were asked a question about health care. Mm-hmm. And the easy answer, in my opinion, is to be like, everyone should have universal health care and free access. Because, like, mm-hmm. that's the people-pleasing answer. Right. Because who doesn't, you know, want That's the world that? peace answer. Right. Yeah. It is the world peace answer. But yeah. if you're someone saying, like, no, I think health care is a privilege, not a right, that's something that more people are going to disagree with. Sure. So I think that puts you kind of at a disadvantage in a way. Right. Because- but you don't. But you – the hard thing is, too, because you you – You want to be honest and share your honest opinion, but you don't want that to work against you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the tough thing. Like, this is why, like, I would love to be a judge one day because Mm -hmm. I would love to see, like, like, how do, how do other judges go about that? Because I know, like, I'm like, if I were to see a contestant, like, speak your truth, like, share your opinion, I'd be like, heck yes. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't care what your opinion is, as long as you can, you know. And judges are, you know, supposed to do that. But Mm -hmm. if you think about it, it's like. You've also had experience in Miss America, whereas a lot of, there's, first of all, there's always a novice judge, which yeah. has no idea. Mm-hmm. Then there's other people that, you know, usually haven't competed because a lot of people on judging panels are also men. So obviously they haven't competed. Right. So you don't know if they're going to go by that. But also a lot of judging panels, you know, they're given the orientation, but at the same time, there's always a big problem with judging panels not using the full scale. Yes. Like if someone and that's is like a fair. two, they'll give them a six to be nice. Yeah. And then if someone's really good, they'll give them like an eight or nine. But isn't it weird though? Because That's we never enough. see our scores. Oh yeah. Isn't that weird? Like they're so conscious about, you know, some judges will be so conscious about the kinds of scores that they give out, but just score honestly, because we're never going to see that. Right. Which I think is also a flaw in MAO that you'd never get to know. Right. I think, I don't, I, I, ooh, I, I think it'd be nice to see your scores, but can you imagine Oof. all of the drama that would be involved with oh my people God. sharing their scores and like, that, yeah, there would be such a You know, a mess. knowing what other people scored over them or above <laughs> them and this huge right. hoorah about it. I don't know. That would be very messy. Can of worms. It'd be super messy. It'd be interesting. I know. Be I'm, so cur- I'm so curious about that. But yeah, integrity, I think, sticking to your guns and not, <laughs> dare I use the phrase, <laughs> selling <laughs> yourself out. Um, yeah. Oh, are Stick- you triggered? I'm triggered. Honestly, but it's it's so true though. Like, you know, speak your truth. If, if you feel one way, run with it, you know, regardless of how other people may feel. And I don't know, like, that's really all I have to say about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, Oof. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I, yeah, I just feel like I've preached that in every episode. Have integrity, stick to your guns, do what you feel is best for you and stand behind that a hundred percent, but also support other people who choose to do differently. That's about all we have, I feel like. It is. I'm Honestly. To, Sorry if that's disappointing. <laughs> it probably is. But we just really wanted to talk, like bring up that DM and talk about, you know, what to do if you're feeling burnt out and you feel like quitting and right. and a lot and, of it is. And too, I think a lot of that comes with when you're going through that, you really have to hype yourself up. Yeah. And remember why you started. Remember what you're doing this for. And I think too, you can either choose, you know, you can look at, this is the thing. Every situation has so many different sides. Whereas if you quit, you either are like, you know what? I'm walking away from this. I don't need this BS. I'm out. See you never. Mm-hmm. Or you can, um, you know, 
be seen as, oh, she didn't honor her contract. She couldn't, she can't follow things through. Or if you continue to keep the title, it's like, okay, if you really don't support the program and you don't want nothing to do with it, but you're playing this game, like, is that integrity? Right. You know? Oh, it's so messy. Or it's like, or do you look them in the eye and say, you know what? I can do this without you. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and I'm going to get whatever dress I want. I'm going to go to whatever appearances I want. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to Miss Whatever and I'm going to just be me and have fun and then say peace out when my year is over. Right. You know, so it's, it's, there's so it's, many it's different four options there. <laughs> oh God, that's can, too much. It is. And it's, and it's honestly, thing, the thing is, it's not my decision. Right. Right. I'm not in the situation. I'm not. Every the experience is unique. To the individual. <laughs> Again. Well, we're going to put that on a t-shirt. Oh my God. I think it's something that we keep reiterating because a lot of people still can't grasp that. Yeah. And that every experience is so different. Right. And it's one of those things, again, I don't, I, I'm sick of this crap, honestly. <laughs> like, I, I don't need to sit and defend myself, neither do you. No. This girl, again, you made the right decision for you. We're exactly. proud of you. Do what you feel is best for you. Exactly. And we hope that this little rant fest helps someone out there. <laughs> rant fest. But again, Jessica, to segue that really quickly, yeah. what do you do to keep your confidence up while Ooh. competing? This is this is especially hard if you are competing like over and over and over again, like mm-hmm. and you and you're not winning. We kind of talked about this in the last episode about, you know, what are you supposed to do if you're consistently not winning? And of course that's a huge confidence buster, but I think like a, a huge part of what I did was just like a lot of self-reflection and like, why, why am I doing this in the first place? Second of all, like, why am I worthy of this? And then also like, I kind of remembered like what in hindsight, like what kind of difference am I making? Because like when you, when you feel like you have a purpose, then you're, I mean, you have, you have confidence Mm -hmm. after that, you know, when you find a purpose and you find a passion and you feel like you're making some sort of impact like that, builds on you. So what would you say was your purpose in MAO? Ooh. In one sentence. In one sentence? Yep. Oh my god. Just kind of sum it up. It has to do with my platform for sure. Well, yeah. So I'm still doing it now. Right. But I think my purpose was to I don't know, be a positive light for like little girls. That's so cliche, but like that was my platform and that's where I felt like I mm-hmm. made the most impact, I think. Right. And like even tonight, like I just had a little gems meeting with my girls tonight and like when they leave and they're just like, I'm so glad I met you. And like, just like really nice, cute things like that. I'm like, oh, so I, I like made someone smile like just once. Mm-hmm. And that's, that was my job. Can we talk about how you went and did that? And I ate cinnamon toast crunch and watched One Tree Hill <laughs> and wait for her to come back. Everyone's experience is different. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God. Amazing. That's going on a quote. But oh, love that. I would say to, with, I mean, when I look at my purpose, mm-hmm. I think mine really evolved, especially because sure. mine was a, over each title. I think I was kind of different in every one, but mm-hmm. I kind of just wanted to be a badass, honestly. Yeah. And I wanted. To- Didn't you always say like, you know, as long as you were involved in it, maybe you always wanted you wanted to change something. Yeah, and I think because I think that if you're not moving forward or progressing, you're only going backwards. But right, I think That's fair. I just and I talked about this way back, and I think it's probably barebacks and blue hair because that's where I did most of my platform talk but Mm -hmm. I think I just wanted to prove that you don't need to always like say the right thing or uh, maybe like wear the most modest thing or whatever but you can still be really you know um sharp I like how I'm talking about being sharp and I'm sitting here like (laughs) no no but you can still be respected for like I love the um the quote that you, you don't need to be modest yes, to be respected. Don't need to be modest to right. be And I just kind of wanted to prove that to people and I wanted to kind of break that Miss Wisconsin sort of vibe. But yeah. um you know and I and I like to say too that I lived my platform. Yeah. And I think and of course if you have a personal experience you live your platform but I feel like I was very much the same You're person the same when person I had throughout. the crown on, when mm-hmm. I had the crown off. Same. And I wanted to be that person yep. for people. 100%. Yes. Yeah, I think that's cool. So if you're if you're feeling like really, really low, I think it's it all comes back to like, what is your purpose and why are you doing this? And what makes what, you different? What makes you stand out? Yeah, exactly. Because we can tell you right now 
that something you are special Mm -hmm. and something does make you stand out. Right. And even if you ever need the encouragement, we are here to give it to you. Hang out in our DMs. We're happy to pump you up. We always say we dish brutal honesty. Mm -hmm. And the honest truth is that there is something special about everyone. And I think that if you are having trouble finding it, you can find it through service. Yes. You can find it through your platform, your talent. I think that something great about this organization is that you have the tools to find it. Mm -hmm. Then even after you're done, you still have that sense of purpose. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like we always say like the experiences that I had through MAO are something that I'm going to carry with me for a very long time. Right. And one of that was like a passion for what I do and a love for other people. Right. And if you're feeling down too, what always made me feel better is, you know, the, even the age that you compete in these things, I think is wild because yeah. no one really knows who they are yet. Oh no. And everyone's trying to figure out college and life after college. And that's not easy. So the think, ages of 17 to 25 are like the weirdest. I just think it's a true <laughs> testament to how strong these women actually, you know, really are. Yeah. How much they're going through and uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, all of that jazz. Right. So I think even just doing that while being in this <laughs> mental state is a prize to yeah. be cherished. You but, are a winner. <laughs> oh my no, God. No, honestly. So mm-hmm. if you're listening and you need that self confidence, you're a rock star. Yeah. You'll get there. Yep. These, and all honesty, these are just pageants. Yeah. We there were talking about this picture. last night. Yeah. We're like, there, we're like bigger in picture. hindsight, it is just a pageant. And everyone who is Miss, even Miss America has said, mm-hmm. this is not going to be the best year of your life. Right. Not saying that's a negative experience, but like, it's just a stepping stone. It is. And if you think about it, like, you don't the, want to peak at age 17, 25. Age no, <laughs> no, there's so much more beyond that. Like, you know, I always say like, there's so much more to life than a crown and sash. And it's so true because you, whether you hold a title or you just compete once or something like that only lasts for such a short amount of time, but it's the lessons that you learn and the things that you take away and the people that you meet are going to last forever. And when you're stuck in the pageant vacuum, sometimes it's, it's hard, hard to see to that see it. for sure. It really is, but Agreed. we've done it. We're out of the vacuum now. And now we get to tell you all about it. <laughs> we get to tell you all about our experiences and just like. And use those tools now in our big kid career lives. Right. We're here We're thriving. To, we're here to tell you the <laughs> truth. We're here to be a shoulder to lean on. We got you. We support you. We support all women. We support everyone. Because again, experience. What is it, Jessica? Experience is unique to every single person. That's not what it was. I decided to switch it up a experience little bit. Experience is unique to the individual. You got it. Boom. <laughs> I wanted to switch it up because we said it 15 times. Heck Is that yeah. going to be the title of this episode? Probably. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Well, let's wrap out. up. Let's wrap up. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for listening to episode 16. Be sure to follow Public House Media and Crown and Dangerous on Instagram and like us on Facebook. You can subscribe to us. You can rate us and review us. Tell us what you think um, wherever you're listening. You can comment and email us and slide into our DMs because we love to hear from you, good or bad. Just slide in and talk to us because we love it. We'll be back in two weeks. Oh, my oh God. No, what's in two, two weeks? weeks? <laughs> Hopefully. What is in two weeks? It, two weeks is April already. That's horrendous. So April 4th? Oh, my God. Wow. Two weeks on April 4th for a brand new episode. This has been Maddie and Jess reminding you to always wear your invisible crown. Keep it real. And if you do not know what to say, world peace. Bye.